from a very young age, I've always had these stereotypes that I had to fight with and go against. So for me, another one really didn't bother me. Not just because of my gender, but because of my sexuality and because of my color. You know, if you look, is she a girl, is she a boy? Is she black, is she white? Is she, what is she? Michelle Aboro, I'm a former undefeated world champion boxer. I grew up in Peckham, happy Lagos, little Lagos. And in England, boxing is very much part of the fabric of society. Every Sunday, boxing would be on. So it was something that you'd sit down as a family and you'd watch boxing matches. So it's, it's really, really part and parcel of being a British person. You've got to know your boxing a little bit. But you've always been, like, orientated to sports, always. You were always beating up your youngest brother and your sister. <laughs> No discrimination there. No, no, no. You also <laughs> used to beat her up as well. Yeah. <laughs> Let her get in on the act. I'm one of seven kids, and when I was a kid, most definitely I was very, very emotional and quite angry. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, 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 and sports, combat sports, really helped me to control that, to hold me in. You know, I was like this atom bomb at any moment. <laughs> My mum, as I was growing up, she would always be, I don't know what to do with you. Out of my, all of my brothers and sisters, I was the most, how can I put it, the most dramatic one in the family. I was always getting into trouble, climbing up, you know, I was always doing something. And sports really controlled me. It really helped me find peace and tranquility. That's that picture that's up on the wall. My first initial interaction with boxing, I was told I couldn't do something because I was a girl. 18 years ago. There was always an article saying it was, wasn't was feminine and, you know, that they shouldn't fight and, you know, women don't do things like that. It's just people being stupid about, you know, male and female, you know. Pathetic. <laughs> When I first started, as I said before, the reason why this coach said to me that you can't train was because it was actually illegal. If this coach would have trained me, he could have lost his license as a boxing coach. It was only in England in 1996 that they actually allowed women to have a professional boxing license. I think you were looking for a way to get the excess energy you had out of you because you could never stay still or in one place for very long. You were always very, very active. You oh, went, I won the yeah, you won it. competition, yeah, yeah. didn't And I? you beat everyone by a mile. That was funny. They were all yeah. so, so fed up with it. <laughs> Where I grew up in London, there were three different boxing gyms in that area. And I went to a boxing gym that was about five minutes walk from my mum's house. Bye-bye, Mum. And so I walked into this gym, and this was the first time in my life. I must have been about nine years of age, and I was very curious. And that's when I started to get hooked on the idea of um, combat sport. I must say, I was really blown away uh, with the majestic beauty of boxing because there were these guys in the ring and to me they looked like these ballet dancers, you know, beautifully choreographed movements and it wasn't about them punching each other, that wasn't the part that really, really amazed me, it was the part of how they could not be hit and, you know, it was like they could read the mind of the other person
I totally fell in love with boxing. It didn't matter what anybody threw at me, I was gonna go through it and get to the end. I didn't let people bully me. I knew I could be very, very good at this, and so I wasn't gonna let anybody push me off of my journey in this. I didn't have sponsors. I didn't have a big promotion team. I had to work full-time jobs. When I won, it's, it's like when everything comes together and then you are told you've done the right thing. It really instilled in me that I had made the right decision. It gave me the ability to believe in anything is possible. I moved to Shanghai eight years ago, and while I was over here, I was looking for a boxing gym. I couldn't find anywhere to train, and the idea started coming around in my mind that maybe it might be a good idea to do something over here. And I came to visit, who was not my wife then, and we arrived here with just this idea of that we wanted to open this gym. But we weren't pushed. Actually, a, a year before we found the Borough Academy, I was diagnosed with uh, stage three breast cancer. I think being diagnosed with cancer, this gave me that push that made me want to get this done before I don't know what, you know, the idea of legacy. Um, and so that was very predominant in my mind. I was thinking I could die from this. I didn't know. There was no, nobody telling me you'd be 100% fine. And it had started to travel through my body. And of course I tried every preventative there was out there because one thing we all want to do as human beings is we want to survive, you know, and I wanted to survive. I wasn't ready to die yet. But then you get through the night, you wake up in the morning and it's okay, you know, and you move on. And because I was still teaching through the time when I was going through treatment. Time! Let's lose the ropes, good job guys. Um, a lot of people, my doctor too, was like, no, you need to stay in home and stay in bed. And I think if that would have happened, I don't know if it would have been um, a nice ending to um, the battle I was fighting with cancer. So. Jeb's gonna be thrown to my head by my partner. We're not gonna swat it out the way, we're just gonna parry it by deflecting that punch to the side. This way I keep control of the person in front of me. But so your partner's because gonna throw a jab. I kept going and I kept on having a life, having this business, having to get this ready, and having somebody like Yilan behind me supporting me and being there and saying, you know, this is okay, you know, you look fine today, you look great. You know, even though I look like S-H-I-T, she was there and saying, no, you look great, you know, come on, you can do it, you know. Um, so a year after that, when I had finished with uh, chemotherapy and was going into radiation, we found this place. And in 2014, we opened a borough academy. <laughs> I wanted a place where everybody feels welcome. We really pushed hard to make it feel different from other boxing gyms. That when you walk in the door, you're not confronted with that very typical stereotype boxing gym. That you come in and people greet you, make you feel welcome. The people that come to our academy, our borough academy, are everybody that I expected, that I wanted, that I dreamed of having. Five seconds, last round for you guys. Three, two, 
One, let's go, box! It's like the United Nations here, you know, you have people from all walks of life, from all countries in the world, you know, from an athlete on a very high level to a person that has never ever trained before and never ever thought about boxing before. If you know about our foundation, we have an Aboro Foundation, because in the beginning, we wanted to give back, and we wanted to give back being in China, because we thought, okay, we're in a place, we're taking from that environment, how can we actually put back into the place in which we're living? And so, me and Yilang came up with the idea of that, okay, for this moment, what we're capable of doing is giving these kids free boxing lessons. So one kid turned into basically 21 kids um, along the way, and we were giving them three times a week free boxing lessons. It was after I was uh, clear for five years, we spoke about having a child as a same-sex couple, and we went ahead and done it. Life being a mother has changed what I want in life, what I want to do, what I want to be, where I want to go. In Shanghai, you don't have these blue days very often, where the sky is like piercing blue. The sky was like that on the day she was born. And so when we looked out the window and saw this, we were like, wow, look at this day, it's amazing, you know? And um, we didn't really have a name because we didn't know if it would be a him or a her. Uh, because we didn't have the sex um, identified, we wanted to be surprised. And so when she was born, then we realized she was she. So we call her Blue Stella, which means Blue Star. Um, and my mom's name is Stella. For me, really what is important now is that I can actually do the best possible thing, not just for my daughter, but for the community in which I live in here, for the people that are around me. I want people to actually understand the beauty and grace that I found in boxing. What people think of boxing is this angry, aggressive, violent sport is far away from what actually boxing is. Okay, the outcome of what you're training is to heal another person. But it is not in a violent way, because if you think in an aggressive, violent way, you're not able to do what you can do in a room. Being unreasonable means to me confronting stereotypes. Me as a person, as a human being, I believe I have the choice to be who I want and I don't have to adapt to your wants or will. Um, and that's how I've lived my life. 